A Republican member of Congress named Doug Collins recently appeared on Fox News and you know, Lou Dobbs and him were conversing about the current situation in Iran, and they were outraged at the fact that Democrats dared to try and attempt to rein in Trump's authority to wage war with Iran. He already doesn't technically have the authority if you believe in the Constitution, but nonetheless, you know, they were outraged that Democrats would try to rein him in. And Doug Collins said something that is so stupid, so profoundly idiotic that I couldn't not talk about this because it really speaks to a broader issue with the Republican Party. They are downright fucking insane. Take a look. ...about uh, constraining his authorities as the commander-in-chief vis-a-vis uh, -vis Iraq. How, <laughs> how venal, how vapid can one party become? You know, Lou, it just is amazing. I mean, if it wasn't so sad and serious with our country to have Nancy Pelosi, I did not think she could become more hypocritical than she was during impeachment. But guess what? Surprise, surprise. Nancy Pelosi does it again, and her Democrats fall right in line. One, they're in love with terrorists. We see that. They, they mourn Soleimani more than they mourn our Gold Star families, who are the ones who suffered under Major. Soleimani. That's a problem. But also look at this. In 2011, when President Obama went into Libya and stayed longer than, quote, they thought, you know, the war power says he should stay. They said nothing. In fact, she actually excused it and said, this is just what, you know, presidents do. Let me say, as someone who has a very real constitutional issue with the War Powers Act to start with, I mean, this is just another, again, blatant hypocritical act by Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats because they don't like the president. Democrats are in love with terrorists. Unbelievable. This is supposed to be a representative of one of two of the biggest parties in the country. And he literally just claimed that the other party loves terrorists. Unbelievable. But I mean, the thing about this is it's only slightly more bombastic than usual Republican commentary on political issues because this is a party that is downright fucking insane. I mean, if you listen to Noam Chomsky, he talks about this. This party has marched so far to the right that they've fallen off a cliff. They're almost irredeemable. The only way that this party is salvageable is if we see party realignment if Bernie Sanders becomes the presidential nominee and enough centrist Democrats flee and go to the Republican Party and so much move there that they like watered down the overall, you know, Republican message and platform. But I mean, they're just they're too far gone. This is why there's so much deadlock in American politics, aside from the money in politics, because we have one of two parties that is completely fucking insane. He literally just said Democrats are in love with terrorists. I mean, what a stupid thing to say. And then he says, we see that they mourn Soleimani more than they mourn Gold Star families. First of all, it was the president who you shill for, who got in a literal spat, a public dispute with the Gold Star family in 2016, so shut the fuck up there. And second of all, we're not mourning Soleimani. Nobody in America even knew who the fuck Soleimani was before Donald Trump decided to assassinate him. We don't like the idea of Donald Trump, an unhinged buffoon, escalating with another country. We don't want another war. But we denounce the prospect of war. He interprets that as, uh, oh, well, Democrats, they just, uh, they love terrorists. Now, to be fair, he's talking specifically about elected Democrats, and I'm no fan of them. I can't stand them. I hate most Democrats. But do you honestly believe that Nancy Pelosi is in love with terrorists? Really? You honestly believe that, Doug? I mean, what an idiotic thing. Like, we have people like Ilhan Omar in Congress who will say the most benign thing about Israel, and all of Congress throws a conniption fit, but then this moron will claim that Democrats love terrorists, and will there be any consequences for his actions? Will there be, you know, um, a censure? Will they vote to condemn him? Nothing. It is always the left who is held to a really high standard, and the right can say downright batshit fucking insane things, and, you know, nobody really bats an eyelash because they've gotten us accustomed to their insanity. This is the norm from them. So if they were to stop saying crazy things, that would actually be more, you know, shocking to a lot of people because they just keep saying stupid things. So if you keep saying crazy thing after crazy thing, eventually you get used to it. It's the same thing with Donald Trump. Like, he lies so much that it's no longer shocking that he tells, like, five lies throughout the course of a 10-minute speech. He 
It's just, he does it so much that you become used to it. It's a normal thing, you know? But we shouldn't be accustomed to these types of phenomena. Like when a Republican Party official, especially one who's elected, says something like this, we should all collectively laugh at them. When they do things like Jim Inhofe and, you know, bring a fucking snowball to the floor of the Senate to disprove climate change, we should all collectively laugh at them. It should go viral because it shows how insane this party is. Now, he... Talked about Obama in Libya. I was against Obama's action in Libya, but he says, as someone who has a very real constitutional issue with the War Powers Act to start with. Now, I honestly don't know what he means. I don't know if he takes issue with the provision in the Constitution that says the president should get approval from Congress um, or must, in actuality, get approval from Congress to start war. I don't know what he means, but if I interpret what he's saying more charitably and that he actually supports the War Powers Act then look, you can be against Obama, right? I think that that's good. And I would agree with you if you said I was against Obama's action that he took unilaterally in Libya. Fine, no disagreement there. But the problem is that there's no consistency. If you're against Obama, but also against Trump and his unilateral actions, then there's no story here. But you're giving Trump a pass, but Obama doesn't get that same pass. In fact, you and Lou Dobbs were talking about how it's crazy that Democrats want to rein in Donald Trump's power to wage war unilaterally. So, I mean, what side are you on? But we know what this is. This is team sports to him. Republicans can never, ever do anything wrong, even if I technically don't agree with it. Um, but Democrats, doesn't matter. They are always, always wrong. They're never right in any circumstance ever. I mean, what a hack. This is quintessential political hackery right here. So, I mean, what a stupid segment. It's not surprising, again, but nonetheless, we just can't turn away when we see Republicans say things like this because we can't become accustomed to this level of insanity. The party is fucking insane. They are the party of death and destruction. That's what their policies indicate. And, um, yeah, they need to collapse as a party because if we truly want to survive as a species, Republicans must be defeated permanently. We have to defeat them. We can't work with them. We can't put them in our presidential administrations. They have to be defeated permanently. Period. The Humanist Report is fake news. Mike only cares about Crazy Bernie and his wacky socialist ideas. Sad. Very sad. I'm unsubscribing.